So recently I purchased a 32 inch slider. This is for the business. And the whole reason for this was to add some more movement when I'm doing a talking headshot or narrative work or anything like that. Now, this is fantastic because just like the scene you are seeing now, it has a guide bar and it is allowing me to do parallax shots. And it's very little fuss for me to set up and that is the beauty of it. However, it has exposed a problem that I was already aware of prior to purging this and it is not actually to do with the slider itself. So the GH5, the autofocus is garbage, which is why I rely on manual focus. And unless you have a dedicated focus puller with you all the time, and you're not willing to just chuck money at a situation whereby you can purchase a better camera with better autofocus, then the manual route is the way you've got to go. And this largely relies on things like the sensor size, how big the lens is, the aperture that you're using, how far away from the subject is the camera, is the camera moving, is the subject moving. So there's a lot for you to take into consideration when you are a one man band, so to speak. So what is it that we're gonna do that will help fix this? And it's something that street photographers use all the time and it's actually called zone focusing and we'll get into that now so for a street photographer they are concerned with efficiency and opportunity so they literally just want to lift the camera see a subject take the photo they don't want to be concerned with another step like order focus to ideally miss an opportunity so what they do is they set their cameras up in such a way that they know that if they are 10 feet away, it could be 15 feet of actual focus area. So any subject that moves in that 15 feet of focus zone, they'll be in focus. So all they, they gotta do is compose the shot and take the photo, which is much more efficient for them. Right, so the idiot in the video is about to tell you some wrong calculations and the reason being is because of this. My partner's home so um, I'm going to give this one more try and then we will stop. I just got one more. What's the matter? Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. A what? Who punched you? It wasn't a punch, it was a kick. Your jaw looks like he's gone to the left or the right. Yeah, the ass. Can't help it, dude. Right, let me finish this and I'll be there. Right. So go easy on him, but he, he, I've made the corrections on screen, so that will cover that. But yeah, I, I got a little bit distracted. So back to me. So how do they determine how much space is actually the focus zone? And the first step is knowing your sensor size. So for me, this is a micro four third sensor, which means it has a crop factor of two. Now what that means is, is that if I've got a lens on there and that is set to 24mm, that becomes 48. Now because I am using a Canon EF lens, I have a speed booster on there and this increases the field of view by 0.71. So effectively what that does, it turns that 48 into a 30mm. So now that I know that I have a 30mm lens effective field of view, and I say I want to be 10 feet away because that's where I feel comfortable taking photos of people. I'll then go, okay, well, what if I shoot at F4? What is, at those settings, what is my focus zone? How big is that going to be? 
and using an app called Hyperfocal Pro, which is on the Android store. So I'm sure there's something similar on the app store or the Apple store, sorry. And that is telling me that I'm getting about four feet. So take everything with a pinch of salt because there's obviously certain tolerances that are applied here, but there's four feet of focus on. So from 10 feet away, what that means is two foot in front and two foot behind, again, pinch of salt, will be in focus. So anything that walks into that zone, if I take the photo quick enough, jobs are good on. But I'm not a seasoned professional when it comes to street photography. So how do I increase my chances of making sure that I get the shot? Simply go into F11 changes it from four feet to 15.6. So that has increased my odds of making sure that I get a passerby in focus when I need to. So now that we understand the basic principles of maximizing your focus zone, sorry, my brain drifted somewhere. How do we apply this to the camera in manual mode on a camera slider, how do we utilize this method to make sure that when we are doing our testimonials or documentary or narrative work and we're using the manual focus, how do we make sure by using this, everything is in focus and we'll get into that now. So now that we understand the principles of the focus zone and how this applies to a street photographer, we then need to utilize this for the parallax slider. But in order to really achieve this, we need to understand how much distance it is actually traveling between myself and the end points. And in order to do this, we need to unfortunately use a bit of math and it is Pythagoras' theorem because essentially this is a perfect triangle, well, almost perfect. I know at the midpoint of this triangle to myself, that is always going to be the shortest point. By the time the carriage goes from either point of the slider, that will be the furthest the way that that camera will be from the subject. And I need to know how much further that's going to be because if we've got a shallow depth of field of say two inches, because when you shoot at 1.7 or F2, and you're three feet away, that's quite literally all you have to play with. And that is where autofocus, really good autofocus shines. But like I said, we've got to work this out because we're doing this manually. So using Pythagoras' theorem, and I'll put all this on screen for you to get an idea of the distances and the camera slide and the effects that this has on the travel distance. I know that if this is three feet away, which is 36 inches, Based on this 32 inch slider, the furthest point is 39.39. So let's say 39.4. So that is traveling an extra 3.4 inches. And like I said, if we're doing it at a F2, we've quite literally only got between one and a half and two inches. And we'll work that out. So you again, using Hyperfocal Pro, the app, I've set the lens to 34 mil because I got it right this time. And I've set the lens at F2 and we are three feet away. And that is saying that the focus zone that we've got is 0 0.132 feet. That actually equates to 12 inches times 0 0.132 is 1.58 inches. So if I focused on my eyes at the midpoint, that camera slider is going to be traveling 3.4 inches. That focus zone is going with it. If I've only got 1.5 inches, I'm going to get a blurry or very soft image. And that is typically not what we want. So like we did before, we're going to increase some settings in order to increase our odds of the actual subject remaining in focus. And I know what you're going to say, but I want f2 i want 1.7 or i want 1.4 unfortunately you're not going to be able to but you can see for instance let's shoot, uh, choose 5.6 and you're probably thinking that'll do it because of the distance 
and we're still at three feet away, that has changed at 0 0.374 feet. So 12 times 0 point, 0 0.374 is 4.4 inches. So it's just meeting it. Now, when I do these talking head videos, I'm not very expressive. And what I mean is I don't move it in and out. And I remain relatively static. And that's because I know I'm working with a manual lens. I don't have much focus zone to play with. So once I've got focus on my eyes and I've set it with the app, that is where I largely remain. You might be filming a subject that is very expressive and they will move in and out as they're talking. So ideally you would want a foot, say 12 inches of actual focus on. Now, in order to get that, you'd have to leave the lens at 5.6 and you would have to increase the distance by five feet. Now, that means that you get 1.064 feet, say 12 inches, of focus on. Now, the added benefit is with the Pythagoras system, and I'll put it back on screen again. Because this is a 32 inch slider, that is fixed, that is a fixed dimension. By moving it back to five feet, I am five feet at the shortest distance, but the actual distance between myself and the point is no longer that much further than the center point because of the way that the, the Pythagoras' theorem works, it actually benefits us. So it means I think there's about two inches whereby it only moves further back as opposed to 3.4. So not only have I increased my uh, focus on to 12 inches, I've also reduced the amount that it's traveling backwards. So then that means I have 10 inches roughly to play with, which is exactly what we're looking for, which is perfect. And in the previous section, when I was sitting on the sofa, I had that at five feet away and I set that to F4. Now I will show you the settings for that. So that was 0 0.78, well, 0 0.74. So, 12 times 0.748 which is about nearly nine inches and because i remain relatively static i knew that i'd be okay and as you can tell with the the previous section that that worked out really nice so those are the things that you need to take into consideration when you are purchasing a parallax slider and you intend on using it with manual focus because you ideally want to set and forget it affords you the ability to scout the venue first see how much distance and the location that you have to be able to utilize this because it might be that whilst you want to use the camera slider in that scenario where there's not enough space and there's not enough light and you have a pretty big slider it's a bit of a no-go but it's all things that you need to consider and i know it's frustrating because as creatives we want to be very artistic but there comes a point where we do have to use a bit of math in order to make sure that what the client is ultimately paying for is delivered and that is it um, so if you found this content useful, give me the thumbs up and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.